Department of State Services declared Sunday Boho wanted after raiding his home in Ibadan. His wife still missing. Both chambers of the National Assembly consider petroleum industry bill on the same day. An energy expert to be here to break things down. And we'll be bringing you the usual off the press where we review the dailies and also today in history on the 2nd of July. 2021 and uh, we'll say good morning and thank you very much for joining us on the breakfast here on plus tv africa it's uh, finally a friday for everyone who has been excited about it and uh, of course uh, if you didn't join us yesterday then welcome to the new month once again and we hope that you enjoy a great show this morning good morning to anetta how are you good morning good to see you this beautiful friday yes absolutely i'm looking forward to gj johnson stepping in uh, stepping in to remind us it's uh, friday and say his usual thank god it's friday all right, so there's a lot, you know, that we will be talking about today. We're starting, of course, uh, with uh, the trending stories uh, from, um, you know, yesterday. The DSS confirming uh, that they, of course, visited Sunday Bo's house uh, two nights ago. Uh, there, of course, is a, an audio recording of a conversation that he had with BBC uh, Pigeon um, mm -hmm. that Sunday Boho now, you know, claiming that, you know, around 1.30 a.m. he had gone shot. You know, he looked out of his window and, of course, saw, you know, men of the DSS and uh, the Nigerian army. Um, all, of course, in his house. Um, the DSS claims that about, uh, I think, 13 people were arrested and two people were killed in the gunfire that uh, ensued. Uh, there's also videos online that show uh, blood stains, you know, in different parts of the house on, on the floor outside and also inside the residence. Um, the DSS um, also claims that there are about uh, seven AK-47 rifles uh, were recovered, um, hundreds and maybe even thousands of uh, ammunition, some charms and, you know, certain other items were also found in his house. He has been declared wanted for, of course, uh, stockpiling arms and, you know, some other... Uh, charges. Yes, really. How do we describe this? You know, we could say it's a raid. We could say it's it's an adoption as, or abduction as well. Um, two killed, a man wanted. Basically, those describe our top, top trending stories this morning. The Department of State Services, DSS, has uh, admitted that its operatives raided the Ibadan home of Sunday Adeyemo, also known as Sunday Ibuho, in the early hours of yesterday. Two of Ibuho's allies were shot dead and his wife is missing. Iboho managed to escape, and now the DSS say he's a wanted man. Where is Sunday Iboho? See, remember when this whole issue with Iboho came up, and, you know, I think the earliest memory of Sunday Iboho and his name is when he raided a Fulani settlement um, in the state and uh, basically caused havoc and chaos there. There were different reactions from different quarters. Lots of people praised him. And they said that they faced this issue of herdsmen killings, you know, in their state for a while. You know, farmers and herders attacking each other over invasion of farmland, over cattle rustling. So it's just been a whole lot between farmers and herders and how they couldn't just find a middle ground to understand each other and live in peace. So when Sunday Adeyem, or also known as Sunday Buhu, um, you know, carried out that, that, that act, you know, he was praised by some people. Others say that basically is an aberration. He shouldn't have done that. Those are, you know, Nigerians like you and I, and he is not a um, law enforcement officer. He has no right to have done that. And then people went on to say it is a failure of Nigeria's security architecture that has led to the rise of heroes, so to speak, like Sunday Buhu, who would say our people are facing, you know, these security challenges, and we've been facing that for far too long. We have to stand up and do something about it. So it's been a, a mixed bag of feelings, you know, when you talk about Sunday Buhu. And remember when it came, you know, came to the conversation about the Yoruba nation, how he basically 
has become one of the prominent voices and faces of the Yoruba nation, saying he had Southwest leaders support him. Even though Southwest leaders, um, prominent people, prominent people of Yoruba land, like um, Bola, um, Ashiwaju, um, Tinubu, and, and, and the likes, you know, went on to say that they do not support calls for Yoruba nation, that their emphasis is on a unified Nigeria. But this went on. He, he then said he was going to come to Lagos. <laughs> and at the end of the day, he switched voices and said, oh, he's not here to fight the government. And then we're hearing about the raid in his house. You know, Thursday, around, it was around 2 a.m. in the morning, you know, hearing about this raid on his, on, on his property, two men killed uh, that he found, like you mentioned, a stockpile of arms. I mean, when I went through the list of what the DSS stated, they said they found seven AK-47 rifles, they found three pump action guns, they found 30 fully charged AK-47 magazines, they found 5,000 rounds of 7.62 millimeter ammunition, five cutlasses, one jackknife, one pen knife, one binoculars, they found five UM, US dollars in one dollar denomination, found local and international driver's licenses in Sunday Buho's names, um, that the DSS said they found ATM cards, they found a German residence permit, they, they, they just mentioned a lot. They also listed three voodoo charms, jackets, and traditional body ammo. I mean, when I saw that traditional body ammo, I, I was shocked, I am going to admit that. They found laptops and things like that. You know, so it really is very concerning and now the DSS has declared him a wanted man. W would you say, Osarege, that this is a little too late? Because Sunday Boho seemed to have grown to a, you know, a, a, a position of prominence in Yoruba land that almost some people would compare to Namdikanu, a situation where people now value him, revere him as the liberator of the Yoruba nation. You know, if the DSS had nipped this in the bottom at early stage, do you think we would have gotten this far? If the DSS had declared him a wanted man from the onset, and do you think the, he would have been able to amass all the following he has now and all the support that he might be getting well, now? What do you, what do you uh, think let me, about that? Uh, declared him wanted for what exactly? Uh, that's what they say. They said the DSS, um, this is a statement here. No, I'm, by, I'm asking you now. You say if they, if they had nipped this in the bud, if they had declared him wanted from the start. I mean, if they had arrested him for, 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 what for basically exactly? invading a Fulani settlement and destroying the place, causing chaos there. Well, the thing is, um, if, if, you know, that's for you is of course this is the LS memory and of course what you know he's known for um then you know that point can be made uh, that he may have committed crimes there but it's also not the DSS responsibility to um you know arrest him or declare him wanted you know because of that settlement that was uh, allegedly attacked by Sunday Gbo's men um um it's still the responsibility of the Nigerian police and they have, they have failed all this while then you know I'm not sure what exactly they are there for um, declaring him wanted for that um, alone, you know, well, I just spoke about that, um, is what he has done or what he is doing or, the, you know, the fact that he's, you know, declaring a Yoruba nation or calling for a Yoruba nation a crime. No, it's not. They can't declare him wanted for that. He still has a freedom of expression. Uh, the same way Nandi Kano does still have freedom of expression to, you know, say, oh, I don't want to live in this country anymore. And, you know, of course, we'll also ask other people, you know, do you think you still want to be here? And they can either say yes or no. Um, we spoke a little bit about this yesterday. So what exactly would he be declared wanted for? You know, the, 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 these, you know, from, of course, from the things that they stated that were found in his house, you know, if he's charged with gun running on, or with, you know, possession of um, unlawful firearms and some of all of that, then yeah, you know, there's, you know, questions that need to be asked. But that's still the responsibility of the police, not the DSS. Um, um, you know, the conversation about uh, a Yoruba nation, you already mentioned that, you know, regardless of, you know, whoever does it, you know, that where, where Nigeria is now, you know, every now and then we like to make heroes of, you know, nobodies. Um, and that is because of failure of, uh, of government in, in different, you know, directions. Also because of the levels of injustice that we've seen every now and then that people eventually decide that, oh, you know, let me represent my people and take, you know, this up. The same mistake, you know, and this is how it has been described, the same mistake that was made when Namdekano's house was attacked by the army, uh, you know, when he eventually then jumped bail and, you know, moved to Israel or wherever he, he was, is about the same thing that has happened now. And, you know, he, um, you know, Ibo's house has been attacked, you know, at 2 a.m., you know, in a very, very weird way. Um, he, of course, has run off. He's been declared wanted. His wife is said to be missing. 
is going to you know appear in Israel, you know, and or some other country and start making his own um, uh, uh, putting out his own you know pronouncements from those countries or not. You know, we, we continue to make these same mistakes. The 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 challenge, you know, and of course where where it should have been addressed, you know, initially was by listening. The Nigerian government has failed to listen, you know, to anybody that is not speaking the language that they choose or they want, you know, anybody to speak. They have failed to listen. And the complaints, you know, that people like Sunday Bo have made are legitimate complaints. They, they have some sense in them. You cannot just push it away and want to use, um, you know, uh, uh, methods of coercion instead force. to force people into line. That cannot continue to happen. And people have mentioned that in the absence of people like Sunday Bo and Namdi Kano, there others will rise. Uh, there was uh, um, Ralph was Rike, you know, of Masab long ago. You know, then of course Namdi Kano was uh, stepped um, stepped into that place. Um, I'm very sure that if for any reason there is no longer Namdi Kano, some other person will, you know, step into that position. If these concerns are not spoken about and addressed, because you cannot continue to ignore them. So whatever his crime is, Sunday Bo, Namdi Kano, whoever it is, you know, they if they have you know cases to answer. The police should have, uh, you know, stepped in. They should have been questioned. They should have been interrogated. But these things were ignored. <laughs> it's pretty much the same thing. Exactly. With, it's pretty much the same thing with, you know, a lot, a lot of times here we speak about um, um, mob actions, you know, on the streets across Nigeria in different places. We speak about houses burnt because somebody didn't, you know, um, someone said something, you know, against uh, uh, their religious a father tribe. or a religious leader or something like that. You know, and this, the police ignores all these things, which shouldn't be. So if any crime was committed on the day, like you mentioned, when those communities in, in, um, in, um, in the southwest were attacked by allegedly Sunday Igbo's men, he should have been made to, you know, answer those questions long ago. They ignored. And, of course, now here we are. Another thing that I wouldn't fail to speak of is the, the part where, you know, they say two people were killed um, at his residence. We also continue to make those mistakes and ignore some of all these things like they don't matter. No, two lives were lost. And if you claim that they were lost because they exchanged gunfire with the DSS or with the army, then there should be some clarity or there should be some actual proof some that that's what happened. Indeed. Because it's the same process where you see blood on the floor, but you don't see bodies. Where are these bodies? Which, you know, coroner's office were they taken to? Which mortuary were they taken to? Um, is there actual proof that these were hostiles? Or, you know, is it the same thing? Yesterday I saw um, a video of, um, of the attack on um, uh, Namdi Kano's lawyer's house where you know one person was allegedly also killed and dragged on the floor um, it's, it's a video online it's a very very disturbing video by, by also members of nigeria security agencies these things continue to happen those are nigerian lives and the fact that you may not like what they're saying or you may not like and enjoy their ideology or whatever it is doesn't mean that their lives are automatically worthless and nigerian security ag agencies can extrajudicially just kill people and, and move away with their bodies and that brings back the question of the NSAS protests, where people were asking, where are the bodies, where are the bodies? When you do these things and you, you, you see blood, I mean, sure, you must have seen that video. There's blood all over the floor in the house, inside the house and outside. And that's not the blood of a goat or a, or a rat. Um, those are, you know, human lives that there should be accountability at every level. What happened to those people? If they truly had fired back at the, at the uh, members of the DSS, then, well, unfortunately for them. But it's just not a good look. It's not in any way a good look. If you remember the leader of Boko Haram, the initial leader, I can't remember, but something Yusuf or, or what his name is, also was killed extrajudicially. And that's what brought about the you know, expansion of what Boko Haram is today. So we're not learning lessons. We're not doing better. We're not fixing our attitude. We're not in any way trying to improve on where we were 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago with our criminal justice system, with the approach that our security agencies have, with the approach that Nigeria itself has at its concerns. You cannot use force all the time. So, see, to be honest, yes, regarding this string of invasions that we've seen the DSS do in Nigeria, it's sad that it's something we've not learned from, you know, like you earlier mentioned. Because it, I mean, the same situation with Namdi Kanu, the way they invaded his house and tried to arrest him, the same thing here. How do you go to someone's house at 2 a.m.? If you have a legal arrest warrant, 
Why can't you do that? Why can't you go ahead? I mean, don't we give arrest warrants in, in, in this country? Why don't you get a proper arrest warrant, you know, with legal backing and arrest Sunday Idemo in broad daylight? And let, you know, just the way people have been saying, let justice be seen to be done. Arrest him legally. You know, why do you have oh. to sneak in like a thief in the night and at the end of the day, he's eluded you now, his wife is missing, two people have died. Well, Who would know, answer for those crimes? Um, you know, you know, th there's always going to be that excuse that, oh, you know, he is moving around. You know, like they said, they found a lot of ammunition. May not have been very easy to just simply pick him up, you know. But if there was public notice that he is, you but know, being declared DSS. wanted. It's supposed to be like a D super DSS secret agency. DSS shouldn't even agency. be involved in this, in this conversation, to be honest. Um, that, there still is the Nigerian police. Um, if he was declared wanted for attacks, you know, on whichever communities, then it should have, it should have been public. See, that's another well. issue, Osarge. In this country, people are arrested and they don't know, they don't know what for. If I read through the DSS statements, it's very lengthy, right? I didn't see in any sentence where they mention what crimes they're what they want to go for. Is it for the attack on the Fulani communities? Is it for his separatist agitations calling for a separate European nation? Just when it reminds us of when, you know, we heard about the Twitter banner suspension and the AGF said people who continue to use Twitter will be arrested. And people are asking what laws exactly in our constitution are being broken. And he said, when you are arrested, you will know what, what crimes you've broken. Well, so these are the issues. You don't even know. You're not well, even read your rights when you're being arrested. Well, you don't even know what you're being arrested for. So what is what is the crimes? I mean, we need. It's not, it's not as though we're saying Sonny Buhu is a saint, but we need that clarity as to what exactly are you arresting him for. The the best I can get here from the DSS spokesman Peter Fnaya is consequently, Adeyemi Buhu is advised to turn himself in to the nearest security agency. Those cheering and eulogizing him may appeal to or advise him to do the needful, and they say he should surrender himself to the appropriate authorities. He or anyone can never be above the law. Meanwhile, those arrested will be charged accordingly. <laughs> do they think that Adeyemo would actually turn himself in? Well, he, he might. Uh, it depends on, you know, how he also assesses the situation. Um, I'm, I am, you know, also very sure that all of this is simply because of the, you know, Lagos rally, which was uh, meant to hold. Um, and um, I saw a statement uh, from some other person saying that the rally would go ahead and still hold. Um, there was a statement yesterday from Sunday Bo saying, uh, you know, the rally has been cancelled. He wasn't here to um, fight the government. Um, exactly, and things like that. So, you know, I'm sure that all of that is still, all of these things that are happening are, you know, concerning that uh, Lagos rally. Uh, I said it yesterday that the call for uh, self-determination, the uh, freedom, of course, um, that, that not every Nigerian has that right, you know, by guaranteed by the constitution to say that they choose to not, you know, be in this country anymore. They, and, and, they, those and, are not crimes. Yes, in and when we, when we speak to analysts on the show, and I consistently ask them questions about the motivation, the underlying causes of these agitations, and, and they seem to be speaking with one voice, and they say, if the government actually addresses the root causes, why exactly are these people aggrieved? Why do they want a separate nation? And they tell you it's because they don't feel that sense of inclusion in the Nigerian state. They don't feel like they belong. They feel excluded. So if the government can be unif can be nationalistic in its approach to doing things, you see how people complain about how, you know, for example, even some communities in the Niger Delta complain how about how, you know, they have oil, their, their communities basically fund these things, but yet there's no Indian of the community who's on the NDDC board. So these things that we're looking at, it's not as though, yes, we're, we're advocating just pe put people in it, even if they don't merit it. No, are, are you trying to say that there are no people who are qualified to head these positions and are still indigenous of this? I mean, let people get a sense of inclusion and belonging when they deserve it. And oh, I feel uh, that, you know, that, that should take us a step further towards, you know, this restructuring mindset that we all are clamoring for. In the absence of, you know, the justice and fairness and equity, uh, there would continue to be agitations. You know, True. it might take six months, might take another six years, might take another 10 years, you know, but at some point there will be, of course, one more person who decides, um, I'm tired of this and um, I want out, you know, or I'm trying to, you know, uh, move my people in, in a totally different direction. Um, and if the Nigerian state continues to use force, it doesn't in any way answer uh, the question or solve uh, the problem. Uh, there has to be, um, you know, some, you know, listening ear from the Nigerian government. There has to be some level of understanding, um, you know, and that is something that has lacked uh, or we've, we've found lacking for a very, 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 very long time. And that's why these people continue to arise every now and then. So, 
Uh, we would see how, how this plays out. Um, you know, there's, of course, uh, stories that Sunday Bo's wife is um, also missing. She um, doesn't, I don't think she was one of the people that was paraded by the, the DSS and was one of those arrested. I didn't see any uh, woman in that picture. I can't remember. Um, but um, these things are important. They're important conversations that, you know, we need to have. And um, hopefully, J.D. Johnson will be sharing his thoughts with us uh, when we start uh, off the press right after this uh, short break. Thanks for joining us once again. Good morning.